purpose. Thank you because they will deliver your message. We worship you. Yes. Prepare our hearts to receive it. Yes. Let not the enemy steal it from us. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Anoint them, O Lord. Empower them, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Let them speak your word directly from heaven yes. without dilution. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Let your grace be abound upon them. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I, I want to, before we do anything, I want to honor your pastors. Um, it's so awesome. We, we went to this breakfast. I, I knew Paula and Leo. Um, they preached at our church. We've been knowing Leo for a long time, 21 years. We've been knowing him, but I remember when Leo came to the church, he was always trying to talk to me and Jose. We was pastoring then, we were senior pastors, and every time we knew he came in town, we'd be like, Leo, nobody taking you out but us. He was like, I'm looking for Jose and Angela, so we was his, his girl and his guy before he even knew Paul. So we used to hang out with Leo, and um, you know, they invited us a year ago to come to the work that, and during this time, we was in California again, we was preaching out in California, and we was like, oh, yo, we forgot to put the date down, and we overbooked, and we couldn't come. But I remember, I said, you know what? We're going to make sure we put you on the calendar, and we will not overbook the next one. So this last time, we didn't overbook, and we had just got off the road, and not even a day, we took off, and we came to the work day. And so when we walked in, it's so crazy, and you have to hear what your pastor said. We were supposed to come Saturday. And Paula and Leo said, no, I want you to come Friday to the breakfast. I'm like, babe, we just got off. Let me get a day or two of rest, and then we'll go. And Paula said, no, just come. Just come to the breakfast. I said, OK, we'll just go. So we got up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4 a.m. No, we left at 4 a.m. I think I was up at 2, because I had to get my stuff packed, because I was still laid out. So I got up and I said, you know what, God? Let's, we're just going to go to the breakfast. I want to meet some new people. That, in my mind, I'm always saying this, no matter where I go, in the grocery store or Walmart, I'm always telling myself, when I go in the grocery store to go buy a pack of meat, I'm going to meet somebody in line and I'm going to tell them about Jesus, some kind of story. So I'm just thinking. So I go, OK, I want to go to this breakfast, and I want to meet new people. Not thinking. We was going to sit at the table with your pastors. And right away, they, they got up to go get their food. And I told my husband, I said, babe, I think we're going to preach at their church. <laughs> Didn't know nothing about them. But you, you're going you're gonna to figure out who we are in a little bit. There's a gift on our life. And so I, right away, I picked up. I said, I think I'm going to preach at their church. It's something about them. And we began to sit and talk. And my husband and your pastor just kicked it like they've been knowing each other for years. Like, I mean, they was talking about all kinds of stuff. And then Luel, his wife, comes over. She goes, let them talk. I'm coming on this side. And she comes on the other side. And she sit with me, and we begin to talk. This is what I love about your pastors. No matter where we go, you either are influenced to somebody or you're not. You either have impact on them or you don't. And it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. The love of Jesus draws people together. Amen. The Spirit of God draws one another. I mean, I couldn't come here unless your pastor invited me because I don't know nobody else. It's the Spirit of God that's inside of us that draws us, the love of God. And so if it was a connection with them at the breakfast. I didn't know nobody at the breakfast. Nobody else at the table and talked but them to us. Paul and Leah was at the other table. I'm like, okay, I got new friends. See you later. Bye, Paula, Bye, you. But these guys, they loved on us. They talked to us the whole time. And inside of me, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And from that day, from Friday to Saturday, the, the work it was awesome. And God was doing great things. And then we connected again and, and again and again. And I just want to say, say to you guys, you might be a small church. Listen to me. 
The Bible says when two or three are gathered, just come together, just listen, just gather. Jesus said, I'm in the midst. I'm there. I, and you don't need the mega. I don't need 25, 24 people. Just two or three of them. Just come together. And the first thing you guys did was worship. Worship was amazing. We don't need service. We just needed worship. And God knew if he can cause worship to come down, then his spirit can just flow high. Want God's healing, his mercy, his grace. And again, I just want to thank your pastors for having us giving us the opportunity to come to Springfield. I'm a country girl, even though it doesn't show I'm from Georgia. Uh, it's country, cornbread fed girl and butter beans. That's where I grew up. You know, my husband's a city boy, but I'm a country girl. So when I came to Springfield, I was like, is there a farm and this and that? Because that's what I'm about. So if you see my boots, yeah, um, that's, that's the deal. <laughs> but I, I, I love it. I like out here in the country. I like it. It's far away. You don't have to worry about the city life. This is a city guy. I'm a country girl. Put me on a horse and I'll take off on the other side of town. That would be me. But I thank you, Jesus. I thank God for this church. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let him um, um, take off. But before he takes off, I, I wanna I wanna give you a word. Um, what is your name again, Samuel? Could you come up for a second? When I saw you, when I stepped out of the car. I saw you open the door, and the Lord said, this guy is going to break generations. I saw, I saw God placing a mantle on you. You thought you came to America for schooling, but God brought you for an assignment. God's going to cause you to be a barrier breaker. You're going to break things in the spirit that other men couldn't break, because you know spiritual warfare. And the Lord is going to position you in a season to come that you're going to begin to pray and doors are going to begin to open. People look at you and they don't know the influence that you carry. They look at you and they see some small man, but in the spirit you carry a warrior spirit. And the Lord said that he's going to bring you into a season that you're going to begin to pray and you're going to cause walls to come down. You're going to change the dynamic of your surrounding. And God said, watch in the next season. Your schooling is going to begin to progress. I even see God open a door up for you here in America. There's going to be a strange door. And it's a door that it seems like it might going to close for you, but God said, I'm going to open it for you because it's an assignment for you to do. Sometimes you, you get foreigners, people come from all different areas of, of, of from uh, the international, uh, and they come to America for schooling. But they don't know half of the time they come for an assignment. The schooling is what brings them and it draws them, but then God brings them and place a mandate on them. The Lord said the next season of your life, he's going to cause you to, uh, to surround people around you that are not like you. And the Lord said you're going to begin to speak and prophesize to them. Thus said the Lord. He said the next season he wants you to go into prayer because he's going to show you some things in the spirit that needs to be broken. He said begin to lift your voice up and see that I'm God. I'm on top of the hill. He said draw near to me me as I draw near to you. He said, I'm going to cause the dynamic out of your mouth to cause the wind to blow from the north, the south, the east, and the west. The Lord said, I'm going to give you finances above finances. I see finances above finances coming to you. The Lord said, the greater days are ahead of you. He said, no longer you will be a man of lack, but you will be a man of prosperity. He said, you will teach others how to uh, hold on to the riches of God. He said, because you know the days when you didn't have. And he said, the days that are yet to come, that he's going to fulfill every dream. He said, this is your ground of seed of sowing. Is America is a seed of sowing. He said, you watch my son. I'm going to position you for all that I have. He said, the next two years of your life shall be your greater years. He said, watch and see. I am God and I will do the expectancy of your heart. He said, your heart desire is the need of people. He said, this is the generation that I'm calling you to. Yes, Lord. Yes. I even see your lineage. I see your family that was, it was almost like a curse and a stronghold over their life. But when you took a faith, a step of faith and, and walked out of the doors, the Lord said, now I got your feet and I got your heart. So now I'm going to break the barriers over your family. You're going to begin to prophesy to them and you're going to cause things to fall off their life and you're going to curse the assignment that tries to hover over them. I speak to your country right now. I speak to Nigeria. Every religious spirit I curse in Jesus' name. I command the spirit of the living God to take revenue in that area. Father God, I pray that you will
will be the salt to the earth. And God, that every man shall call you Lord. And Father God, your word says in these last days, God, you will cause men to bow to their knees and call on you. Father, I pray that you would use this man in a greater way. And I pray the anointing breaks every yoke. In the name of Jesus. Where's your wife? Where's your wife at? She's teaching. Get her real quick. Because there's an anointing on the both of you. It's weird how you guys met. <laughs> I'm going to wait for her. There's an anointing in here. Listen, you guys created worship. Anytime there's worship, anytime we give our all to God, God begins to come down. See, Jesus cared about people. He doesn't care about the lights. He doesn't care about a building. He moves, he would move in a barnyard. But when you're calling out for the presence of God, God moves in the miraculous. I hear the Lord say, worship. I saw years of your life when you struggled with depression and oppression. I saw when you thought, will I ever be blessed? And you waited and you waited. Many times you felt like you was the last one. You're the last one. The one that been stepped over. The Lord said, you watch of your days that's going to be great and mighty. He said, your days of worship. You're going to begin to worship and cause a people to come around. And the Lord said, as you worship, your husband is going to begin to pray and lift his hands up and cause curses to fall off of people. He said, in this next season, do not fear. Do not fear. Do not doubt. Because the greater things that I'm yet about to do in your life. You've never seen the very goodness of God like you've seen him before. No eyes have seen, no ears have heard. The Lord said, watch what I'm going to do in your life. He said, these days of depression that tries to come over you, they're going to begin to cease. He said, look at yourself the way he see you. He said, stop looking around you, but look inside of you. There's a woman inside of you that's ready to roar. And the Lord said, don't hold back your worship in this season. He said, begin to lift your mouth and open up your now that I'm going to give you the words and the songs to sing. You see, your songs will not be songs like anyone else. There will be songs that will break the barriers and the chain of a people's life. He said, this is the season that you must rise up and take your place in the kingdom. Yes. I saw when you was a little girl, almost where you were always quiet. You found yourself many times alone. But the Lord said he called you from the forefront. This is a season to rise up and come to a place that God can do great and mighty things inside of you. No longer you're going to deal with fear. Today the Lord come and counsel the assignment over your mind and over your heart. The Lord said today he comes to heal the broken heart. He said those that are broken before me, I'm close to the broken heart. The Lord said he's here to restore everything that the enemy stole from you. He shall give it back to you a hundred, a thousand fold. The years that are lost, he said those years that was lost, he's about to give it to you double. Everything that the enemy touched and took from you no longer will be a wedge. I see God peace over you. You're one that steps out of the box. You're, the, I, I, I keep hearing the Lord say she's not ordinary. Yeah. He said you step out of the box. You do many things different ways. And people don't understand. He said because I made you like that. I made you different. On the outside other people see something else. But in the inside you're a warrior. And you go after things that don't look like everybody else. You pick unique things. And the Lord said, because you pick unique things, he's going to give you creative ideas. Ideas that comes from heaven. That when you walk in your time of desperate, God is there for you. Father, I pray right now. I pray for this marriage. Lord, whenever the enemy tries to come against, we curse it in Jesus' name. Lord, you make covenant with marriages. You make covenant. You're a covenant keeper. Lord, I bless them, Father God. Lord, with all that you have, Favor and increase. Favor and increase. Father, I pray that your word come alive, God. Lord, that your word come alive, God, that you will breathe the breath of Ruach over them right now. Lord, erase every curse. Erase every curse that tries to hover over them. Let the blessing of the Lord come forth. The greater days are ahead of them. 
the greater days. Listen, I, I don't know why. Even to the point of you got questions, how the heck did this happen? I hear it in the spirit. Lord said, don't worry about how anything happened. It had to happen. Because he's going to break some generational things. He said, but you stepped out. He said, watch and see. In six years, he's going to do the unmanageable thing that you ever thought he would do. I see six. God is about to create things for you, miracles for you. Because there's been a long road. But now you have came to a place where you're happy. Amen. And because you're happy, God said, I'm happy. Because the days of old tried to kill you and destroy you. That's right. The Lord said, because you're happy, he breathed his very blessing over you. That's right. And he destroyed the yoke that tries to breathe right. death and cause your life to be destroyed. He says there's a blessing that is laid in store for you. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know the little girl is in class that was right here. Is it Sarah? That's who it is. Who, who's Sarah mom? <laughs> the, the young girl with the glasses. Oh, that's right. Oh, she's over here. Oh, this is on the keyboard. On the keyboard. Yes. This your mom? Yes. Hold up, come here, honey. This crazy. Okay, this is what's crazy. That's why I said prophetic crazy. Sometimes you don't understand things. Your dad told me when we got here, this is my granddaughter, but I didn't know it was your, I didn't know which, who are your kids, you know? So I'm like, which one? Okay, you come here, babe, let me pray for you. That's why, that's why there's such an anointing. As I was watching you, I was sitting here in my seat, and I looked at you, and I, I leaned over, and I told Marty, I said, that's, that's Gigi. You remind me of my niece. You one that has a heart, a sensitivity of your heart. You're very sensitive. Amen. Very sensitive. Many things can hurt you. And you'll question things and, and why. And can be made fun of because people don't know you. But you're very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And because you're so sensitive to the Holy Spirit, God has given you eyes to see in the supernatural. See, when our heart is sensitive to God, God will show us you're able to carry what he puts inside of you. And now this makes sense. Because of what God's doing to your mom, he's about to do in you. Yes. The Lord said that the worship inside of you. Yes. See, this is so dynamic. You see how God does it? I'm telling your mom about worship, not knowing you're the daughter, and I'm about to give you a word on worship. The dynamic. God has you in his hands. He's constantly sending angels to watch over you. Even when you don't think they're watching over you. Even when you're sleeping, they're guarding and they're warfaring on your behalf. That you cannot have thoughts that will make you mess up and trip up. The Lord said he's going to cover and protect you all the days of your life. He said even when you want to walk away and run away and do things like other kids, the Lord said you won't get far because he'll bring you back. The Lord said he's going to cause you to be separate from the other. He said you will not be like other girls and other kids. He said there's things that you would do that is not like the norm. But he said because by the age of you turn 22, he's going to begin to unveil and he's going to cause you to write your own songs. I see the Lord using you in your gifting and your calling. Your calling of worship. There's some things in worship you don't understand and you're trying to catch up and figure it out. The Lord said the next season he's going to cause your hand to skillfully play and you're going to begin to hear sounds that only heaven brings. He said you watch and see your mouth going to begin to open and songs going to begin to flow. He said he's going to cause you to play in the realm of the spirit because even now you try to figure out the notes and the songs and you're like oh God, oh God, I don't know that song and I need to know this song and I'm trying to figure it out. God, God, and God said, watch in the next season of your life, you're going to begin to skip or play like David did. He said, I'm going to place an anointing on you that when you begin to pray, you're going to see things change in the atmosphere. <clears throat> I see the Lord mending your heart. 
You're not a mistake. There was some things happened that was out of alignment. And the Lord said, you're not a mistake, you're a blessing. Amen. He said, what happened wasn't an accident of you being here. The Lord said, what the enemy thought was a mess up, it became God very blessing to the earth. Right. The enemy tried to come yes, yes. and say you were a mistake, but you're not a mistake nor an accident. The Bible, inside of the Bible, the Bible said there's no accident or no coincidence with God. Everything Jesus. is for a purpose and a plan. You're the plan of the Lord, and That's guess right. what? Yes. God has the very goods for you. Because of you carry the word, the gospel inside of you. Even I see your father. Hmm. Your father is not even in a place where he can give you the love that he has because he can't. God brought another man to you to love and shelter That's you right. and protect you. The Lord That's said he's right. going to give you a greater father figure and he's going to unveil the very goodness. I see you going to college and going to school with your degree paid for. The Lord said you're going to be smarter than smart, but he surround you around people that can help and push you. He said, look, look at me. I want you to look. His light shines bright with radiant on your face. There's a glow that comes over you. And that's why God brings fathers to the fatherless. You're looking at a woman right here. My dad was never in my life. Never. When I take never, never. <clears throat> Still today. So the Lord used me when I got saved. And I went to my dad. And I went to him and I shared my testimony. See, my mom raised seven kids by herself. Good mom. And my dad at this time, I didn't know why he wasn't there, but when I knew who Christ was, I knew what I had to do as a Christian. So I called my dad up and I said, hey, I don't know where it went wrong, but I want to forgive you for all the years you missed out on my life. Me as a young girl, I should have to call him. He's the father. But I did that because if God was to take him, if God was to take him, he can rest to know that his daughter already forgave him. Because I don't know if he gave his life to the Lord and God forgave him already, but I had to release inside of me the goodness of God on him. And because I did that, I was able to pray for him on his dying bed. I went to his house, knocked on the door for the first time in my life, and I said, um, can I come in? He looked at me, I looked at him, he freaks out, and all he can do is hug me and squeeze me and cry. I said, I don't want no answers. I have no questions. I forgave you for how you walked away from me and my sister. I said, I'm a Christian girl and I preach the gospel all around the world, but how could I preach the gospel and lose you to hell? The minute I put my hand around him, something broke in the spirit. Something began to break. You see, many times our father's not there. And we don't know why or what, why they can't do what they do. God knows why. See, had I not forgave him, had not I was birthed, I won't be preaching the gospel today to many young people that are fatherless that their father walked out. See, there's a lot of families that have their mom and their dad, but there are people out here that don't have a father. I'm one of those. But I will tell you, God has been a good father. Good, good father. He taught me, he's still teaching me, and I know how to love because of him. That's the same thing I see God placing over you. You're gonna share the love of God to people that don't have the things that you have, that you wanted. And God's gonna show you how to put your arms around those that are hurting and those that are lost and tell them it's okay. God loves me, I have a family, I'm good. You know how you tell them, I'm good. That's what you're gonna tell them. I'm good, they're like, oh really? You're a beautiful woman. You have great, I mean, th there's so much shut up in you. And I wanted to bring that out of you because the enemy likes to come 
and cause depression and anxiety and why, why, why. There's no why in God's kingdom. That's why I love the Bible. You don't see why, why, why. Nobody asks a question. They just go when he say go. Amen. You beautiful. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I'm just gonna put this down right here. Just I know we didn't really get to introduce ourselves or nothing like that. Amen. Uh, but hey, who am I? You know what I'm saying? I thought I was at Wapa, but I guess he took my name. And I said, yeah, that's not me no more. Amen. Uh, but no, my wife and I, uh, we uh, uh, we pastored the church for years. I was her name back in 2005 as an evangelist. We evangelized for a year. And in 2006, my pastor called me uh, and he said, um, uh, hey, uh, somebody just given us some of the church. They want us to pastor it. Would you come and be a campus pastor? We prayed about it. And we became campus pastor, which we thought was going to be for a couple of years, you know, just help the ministry, boom, boom, and go back out. Well, eight years later, we were still the campus pastors there. And then it was like, oh, man, this took longer than we thought, you know. Uh, but uh, in 2014, we took over a church uh, there in Independence, Missouri, uh, my wife and I. And uh, we outgrew the building so far. We outgrew it. The parking lot, there's just no parking. God was just moving tremendously. Uh, and uh, we merged the church with the campus that we were at in 2015. Uh, and great revival broke out. In 2017, early 2017, God spoke to say, it's time for you to go back out and be an evangelist. And I said, no, 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 you got the wrong one. Um, church is doing good. And man, come on, man, we got a good house. Everything is going great. We're fine right where we're at. We're comfortable, you know? Um, so for four months, I I know you never have done this, but I, I, for four months, I told God no. Uh, and man, in four months, God get battling with, battling with me. He says, no, you're gonna go do this. And, and so I negotiated with God. I mean, I negotiated with God. I said, God, you know, um, I'll evangelize and pastor. You know, I'll do both, have the best of both for it, and it's going to be good. I'll pastor church, go preach, come back in, you know, man, it'll be great. And he says, no, you're going to go out and be an evangelist again. And in 2017 of September, we gave up our church, uh, and we went full-time to the ministry. Uh, we left our two kids at home in Kansas City. We moved to the city of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we lived there for a little bit. Um, and, and we just traveled and then God sent us back and we came back to Kansas City and we made our home base from there. It's just easier to travel from the middle of the country than from the one side of the country going all the way to the other side. Amen. Uh, so we, we, we established our home in Kansas City and God had just opened up so many doors. Um, last year alone, we preached at over 60 something churches. And man, we just traveled. I mean, we was home in the year 2018. We was actually home in our physical home only three weeks out of that whole year. The rest of the time, we were on the road. And man, so God has opened up doors tremendously in our ministry. Um, I am Puerto Rican, uh, so I speak very fast. As you can tell already, I speak very fast. I had a coffee and a Red Bull on the way in. And man, so that's even worse. It's not even worse. So I'm like, whoa, man, I will be everywhere. Glory to God, I will be everywhere, man. But I do want to show honor. The Bible does say in the book of Ephesians that God has given gifts to the church. Yes. And man, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pre uh, pastors and teachers. And man, for the equipment of the saints and for the edification of the church. And man, so I want to give it up for your pastor. And man, I'm on, man. Come on, give it up for your pastor. We honor him. We met him. We just clicked it off real good. I, I know he told me, hey, uh, I want you to come preach for me. And I said, all right, man, I'm available this day, this day. And he said, well, I'll get back to you uh, tonight before the end of service, and I'll let you. I know what he did because he's FBI. So, so he went and looked me up to make sure there was nothing wrong with me. Make sure that he walked to me and I would make sure. Before I had a preach, I had to make sure he was all right. So then he comes smiling at us and said, yeah, you're good. I said, I know what you did. So I'm a Marine, so I know this stuff. I served eight years with Marine Corps, so I know, you know, I know what he did. I'm good. Hey, we're good, though, right? We're good. We're good. I know what he did. He did his sled. I mean, he, I, I bet he ran an extensive back on the trip. Extensive, man. Come on, it's all right to have fun. I want to honor the pastor. And man, from years ago, they had this church. And then years, years ago, and man, for 18, 16, 17 years, they pastored right here. And man, it's just, come on, give it up for this couple. And then God bless you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, man. Because if mean, you know this, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but 1,500 pastors quit the ministry yes. every yes. month. Yes. 1,500 pastors quit the ministry yes. every month. That is sad. Yes. Listen, that's sad. 
That's from youth pastors to assistant pastors to, to campus pastors to whatever pastor. And man, they 1,500 every month. Amen? And there's so many that are dying and going to hell. Amen? That we need people to rise up and say yes. Amen? We're running out of time here. So listen, I just want to drop this word real quick. And I, I want to drop this word real quick. Amen? Um, Amen. Worship was, was so good. Worship was so good. But the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. Uh, uh, I know I told you 17 back then. I'm sorry. The book of Acts, the 16th chapter, verse number 25. Uh, it simply says this. But at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang songs. Let me say it again. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang songs. It's up there. Look at that. And the prisoners were listening to them. I love this portion of scripture. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite scripture in the Bible. My favorite story in the Bible. You know why? You know why? Because praise and worship is not what we do, but praise and worship is who we are. Yes. God, thank you, man, for that one holy amen, amen. And praise and worship is not what we do, but it is who we are. Amen. I was created to worship. Yes. I was created to praise, amen. The Bible says that if I don't praise, the rocks will cry out in my place, amen. If I don't yes. praise, the trees, amen, will begin to bow before the Heavenly Father. And ain't no rock going to cry out in my place. Ain't no tree going to bend down before my Savior. Amen. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I have been and the strength struggles of my life, I mean, that thing is inside of me, I and mean, I'm a worshiper, I am a praiser, because yes. God has brought me from a mighty long way. Yes. Yes. And I love this can, can, can I move this, because this like, I mean, I feel like, I feel like I'm just gonna, I mean, I like doing cartwheels and stuff, I mean, when I preach. <laughs> so if I just do a bunch of cartwheels right here, and then backwards flat fit, I mean, backwards flat fit, don't mind me, I promise you we'll get out of here in time, and then just... You got it. You good. We good. We good. I love this portion of the scripture. You might not find this. This is the EJV version, the Evangelist Jose version. And then, uh, it's, it's a little bit different uh, than, than what you're used to reading. I mean, but, but, but I like to put myself in these stories when, when, when I'm reading in the Bible. I want to see, I've been to Israel, you've been to Israel, man, and, and Jerusalem. And, and you know, I, I, I have been to the jail where Paul and Silas was at. And, and, and I saw this, and watch this. It, it, it was, it was, it, 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 the Bible says that they threw him in the inner prison. And it wasn't just an ordinary prison. You don't have to raise your hands in here. I'm sure there's a, a church this size, and then somebody spent a night or two, and don't raise your hand. And then you don't have to, you don't have to show you, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, but, but it's nothing like the jails that we have now. The Bible says it was an inner prison, and then, uh, so it wasn't just a regular prison, but they, they had them down. And not only the inner prison, but they were in stocks. They were in the inner prison and in stocks. And as you study this out, you begin to study their culture. And what they're going, I mean, they had life, they didn't have life, they had, they had, uh, 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 what do you call those? Um, torches, yeah. They had torches, and the ground was muddy and dirty. And, you know, there was animals down there, so there's there's human feces and, and animals droppings everywhere. So it was nasty. It was a very bad place. It was a very bad place. I don't know where you at today. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's going on in your marriage. I don't know what's going on in your finance. I don't know what's going on. And then it's your job, but it can't compare to where Paul and Silas was at. And the Bible says that Paul and Silas were down, and then they were in stocks. And, and, and Paul looked over at Silas, and he said, Silas, I feel a praise coming on. And Silas looked over at Paul, and he said, Paul, I have followed you all these years. I have followed you. Look where it's gotten me. And then, but if you say you got a praise, and then I'm going to go ahead and play with you. I believe that Silas was Puerto Rican. Because Silas, if you give Puerto Rican some wood, and then we'll make a sound, and then it'll be good. And then and I believe that Silas turned his hands, and he began to beat, and then a beat on the start, and it began to sound good. And Paul began to sing, and he began to harmonize. And I believe they began to sing that song, Can't Nobody Do Me Like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. And they began to sing and harmonize. And it sounded better than voice to men. It sounded better than Garth Brooks. It sounded, it sounded better than Pastor Miller. And they come on, they harmonize. And it sounded uh, real good. And then and I believe that, that all the angels started singing along uh, with Paul and Silas. And, and the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that the earth is the Lord's. And then in his 
footstool. The earth is the Lord's footstool. And I imagine that Jesus Christ stood up and he looked at his father and he said, look, daddy, they're not complaining about the stripes in their back. They're not complaining that they're in jail. They're not complaining that they're bound. They're not complaining that they don't have no money. They're not complaining that their internet got cut off. They're not complaining that they have no gas in their car. They're not complaining that their marriage is messed up. In everything, they're giving you praise. In the midst of their hurt, in the midst of their sickness, Is in your praise. 
your breakthroughs in your worship. When you begin to lift up the name of Jesus and not your condition. When you begin to lift up the name of Jesus and not your situation. When you begin to lift up the name of Jesus and not your sickness and not your lack. And then not what you want, amen, and what you need. God knows what you need. He's going to take care of that. Amen. What you have to do, just lift up the name of Jesus above everything and give him praise and give him glory and give him even in your trial. Don't wait till the battle is over. Don't wait a minute until it's done. In the midst of your storm, when it's, you, do you know what midnight represents? Midnight is like the darkest time in the night. But you know what else happens at midnight? New day. A new day. Come on now. A new day. Yesterday, what happened yesterday is yesterday's new. What happened yesterday, I mean, that was yesterday. Midnight represents, listen, I mean, I'm worshiping my new day. I'm worshiping my new season. I mean, I know, I know, I say this in California because California doesn't know that there's four seasons. They think it's always summer. So I have to explain it to them. And we live here, we have four seasons. We have, you know, the spring, the summer, the fall, the winter. A snowball can't make it. In the spring, because it is a snowball from the winter season. Right, right, right. So what happened in that season is for that season. Right. It can't follow you into this new season because it's a new season. Right. So I'm here to deter, I'm here to declare and decree to you tonight before I give up this microphone. I'm getting ready to declare and decree to you tonight that what happened in this last season oh, can yeah. affect you in this season yeah. because this is a new season. And God is taking this church up to a higher place. God is taking this ministry to a higher place. This is a season for you to rejoice. This is a season for you to worship. This is a season for you to stand and determine I can't be stopped. When heaven has a plan for you, you can't be stopped. When heaven calls you by name, you can't be stopped. Adversary is going to come, you can't be stopped. Situation is going to rise up, but I can't be stopped. I mean, I'm determined. After done all, like Paul said, after you've done all, stand. I've prayed, stand. I've cried, stand. I've praised, stand. I'm going to continue to stand because don't got none go with me. Listen, still I. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Name of Jesus. God is for us. He's for us. Let me close with this. 657. I got three minutes. Four. She gave me another minute. Four. She gave me a minute. A minute. One minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I got twelve minutes. All right. Here we go. I come from a church. We do dramas. Like, like live productions. We've been doing a drama for 21 years now is entitled Hell Night, and we use the Halloween season to do it. And in the last 21 years, we've had over 90,000 people give their life to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes, there are over 90,000 people. A few years ago, we did a drama, it was an Easter drama, it was called The Framed. It was about a man who got framed from prison, he found Jesus, found religion, all this stuff. All right, he got saved, good, good, good. good. And so our pastor was doing an altar call. A lot of people came to the altar. There was a young man sitting right here, right, right in the front. And our pastor filled him path <coughs> to talk to him. Say, hey, you need to give your life to the Lord. And the young man said, I ain't ready for all of that. I'm good. Pastor, our pastor finishes the altar call. Many people are coming. He felt, man, I just don't feel right. You need to give your life to the Lord. And the young man says, I have my whole life to live. I ain't ready for all of that. Three weeks later, Listen to me, three weeks later it's the day. He was riding in the back seat of a car. The driver was racing another car, doing 125 miles per hour down the same street he had just told no to God at, in front of the same building. The driver loses control. The curb, front tire hit the curb. The car went airborne, flipped. The young man got ejected out of the back seat he landed 25 feet away from the crime, from the, from the accident scene with his body facing up, his face facing the ground, died instantly. Yes. 
Listen to me, died instantly at that moment. I say this, I say this, you know, every, every, every church I go to, I say this story for two reasons. Number one, the Bible says you're not promised tomorrow. Today's the day of salvation. Right. Your life is but a vapor. It's here one second right. and it's gone the next. Gone the next. See, that story is very dear to us. That was my nephew. My nephew was 17 years old. 17 years. He just came from prom. Yeah. A few months before that, went to prom. He's getting ready to graduate in another month. He didn't wake up that morning, so within my last day, I guess I go tell my mama bye. I guess I go tell my dad bye. I guess I tell my cousins, my nephews, my, I mean, my uncles, I'll you know, tell them all bye. No, no, he woke up that morning just like he woke up this morning. Say it. Put my clothes on, got ready for church, whatever it was. He didn't know that that was going to be his last day on earth. Listen to me, he did not know that. He didn't know it. Woke up just like this. My sister, who used to come to church with us, got offended and left the church. So the young man, this was his first time back since my sister had left. And she left because of an offense. See, we don't understand, listen, we don't, we don't realize that offense is a bait of Satan. And he'll entrap you with that to get you out of the destiny that God has for your life. And you don't understand, listen, sometimes you don't understand that your destiny is linked. You're not serving God just for yourself, parents. I mean, there's children I mean, that are attached to your yes. destiny. Yes. Your children are attached to your destiny. And the decision that you make now can and will affect them if you yes. get up and leave from where God has planted you because of an offense. Right. Yeah. People leave churches every week because of an offense. Right. Yeah. Walk out. The pastor didn't shake my hand. He didn't return my call. I can't believe they don't have pecan pies for the extra Pecan. I forgot. It's pecan, right? Pecan, pecan. In Puerto Rico, it's pecan. It's pecan. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be politically correct. It's pecan. But listen, we get offended. Watch this. Listen to me. We get offended out of the smallest stuff. I can't believe they painted the wall that color. I'm going to go to another church. They have chairs instead of pews. And, 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 and people get offended. Listen to me. And we, we pastored the church for years. A, a family came to us. Came to us and yes. We were getting ready to remodel the church. We were remodeling the bathrooms. And a family came to us. If you guys paint the church, we're, we're going to leave the church. Yeah. I said, really? I said, well, God bless you. Amen. You're blessed. Amen. Go find you another church that has the colors that you want. That's right. And they left. Because we paid. You were here. You were here. I mean, y'all know you guys have pastored a long time. You've pastored a long time. You've heard some of the craziest things. But watch this. I, 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 I wonder this. If my sister had made it right, if she had came back and said, you know what? You offended me. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Let's go for God. Would my nephew still be alive? I'm not judging that. Listen to me. What I'm trying to get at is this. If God placed you in a church, he planted you there, that's where he expects you to grow. You can't uproot yourself and think that you're going to plant yourself somewhere else and grow. I know this ain't popular. I understand it ain't popular. I know, I know but it's good. I mean, it is good. I mean, because we think that we can go from church to church and we think that we'll forget the baggage that we left. But no, that baggage is going to continue to follow you until you decide to get right and make it right and say, I am going to submit myself to where God has placed me and I'm going to serve and then with everything in me to get it right. Amen. The other reason why I do this is this. You woke up this morning. Let me ask you this. If you was to die right now, would you make heaven your home? Yes. 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 Listen to me. Because nobody's going to stand up there with you on judgment day. The Bible says it's a point for every man to die once and in the judgment. That means you're going to have to stand in front of the living God and give an account for your life. Your mama ain't going to be there. Your dad ain't going to be there. Your husband ain't going to be there. Your sister ain't going to be there. Your cousin ain't going to be there. It's going to be you and God. You and God. He's not going to ask you, were you a deacon? Were you an elder? Did you sing in the church choir? He's not going to ask you none of that. He's going to say, what did you do with my son Jesus? Did you receive him or accept him or did you reject him? Oh, you think, how can a good God throw somebody? We don't. 
He don't throw you in hell. You throw yourself in hell by the decisions that you make. So here's my question. How about you ponder on that? If you stop right now, would you make heaven your home? Would you spend eternity in heaven? Amen? If you don't know, I'd love to pray for you. If you don't, you're like, man, you know what? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of easy. You know, I'm kind of in the middle there. I, I really don't know. I'd love to pray for you. This is not a scare tactic that I use. I'm not. Amen. The Bible says, don't fear him that can take the body, but fear him that can take the body and save your soul into everlasting damnation. So that's what you should fear. So if more preachers would preach on hell. Amen. Come on. Because we can believe in the heaven. We also got to believe that there's a hell. We can believe in the goodness of God, but he is coming back for a church with no spot or blemish. He ain't coming back for a prostitute. Come on. He's not coming back for somebody that's been in and out. He's coming back for a pure holy church. I love to pray for you. Bless you. You're not saved. You're not, you've never given your life to the Lord. Or maybe you serve God, but right now you're not living according to the word of God. I love to pray for you. Bless you. Just lift your hand put it right back down. I'll see it. God will see it. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody? We're all saved? We're all saved? We're all living for Jesus? Amen. Come on, I'm good with that. Listen, I'm good with that. As long as the trumpet sounds for the, the trumpet sounds right now, we all get caught up and we look down and there's still some people sitting in the pews. Come on. You'll never be able to say, I never knew. Nobody ever told me. Nobody ever told me. You know now. Amen. So before I move on, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it. Amen. We're good? Amen. All good? All cool? We good? Young, young ladies, y'all cool? Y'all cool? We good? We good? All right. Hey, I'm just hey. <laughs> Just doing it. I'm going for it. Come on. Just going for it. We got a few more minutes, and this is what we're going to do. And I know we take communion. Take communion. I love communion. I love communion. Pete, Paul, and the, 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 the disciples were sitting with Jesus right before he was going to be betrayed. He was being given up. Got his last supper. He got a piece of bread. And he broke it. And he said, this is my body. It will be broken for you. Watch this. Watch this. This is my body that <coughs> will be broken for you. This is the body of Christ. A man that lived 33 and a half years on earth sinless. No sin. No sin. For 33 and a half years. Could you go a month without sinning? Come on, could you go a week without sinning? Come on. Can you go a day without sinning? Can you go an hour without sinning? I heard a preacher one time say, he got up there and said, man God, I pray from now till lunchtime. Let me stay saved from now to lunchtime. And when lunchtime came, he said, God, let me stay, let me stay saved from now to dinner time. Just from now to dinner time. I mean, let me stay saved. But for 33 and a half years, he did it. God said his body was broken. Then he took the cup. He took the cup. And he said, This is my blood. Think about that. Innocent blood. Yes, Jesus. Innocent blood. That still has the power today. To heal sick. Still has the power today. To restore. To redeem. And he said this is my blood. And he passed around. Had them drink it. He said every time you remember. Do this in remembrance of me. And I love that you guys do this every Sunday. Every time you come together. And then to remember the price. To remember the passion. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Because if it wasn't for the blood, if it wasn't for the bread, or for the body, and then if it wasn't for when they punctured his side, and then the Bible says the blood and the water flowed out of him for the price of Calvinism. I, 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 I've, I've heard this. And then here's Jesus hanging on the cross, and, and a puddle of blood forms at the foot of the cross. And, and he looks down, and he doesn't see his own reflection, but he sees your reflection. And he said, this is worth it. And man, it was worth it. It was worth it to see my people redeemed, and to see my people redeemed from the curse of this earth. So we partake of this.
They said, as we partake of communion, we partake of the body, the I want you to think about this. If they had not been for the old rugged cross, if it had not been for the blood that was poured, if it had not been for the body that was broken for us, my gosh, where would you be right now? If it had not been for his grace, where would we be? Could you stand with me? Could you stand with me? Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you for your body. We thank you for your blood. We thank you, God, for what you've done for us. The price that was paid on Calvary for my sins. Your word said, yeah, while, you were, while we were still sinners, you died for us. God, we don't deserve nothing but death and hell, but because of your blood, because of your sacrifice, because of your passion. We're so glad that you got back up and you sit at the right hand of the Father and we thank you. We pray for your grace and your mercy upon us. And I thank you, God, for this church. I pray a blessing upon this church, God. Thank you for what you've done and the ministry and the lives that have been impacted through this ministry. The marriages that have been restored, the bodies that have been healed, and the souls that have been added to your kingdom through this ministry. Bless it, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. So if you all just want to make your normal routine around here to accept communion. And I'm going to ask possibly if, if, um, if uh, Jose and, and Angela, if you guys can hang out on the, on the north wall there by the altar there. And if anybody wants some special prayers or um, wants to receive a prophetic word, um, after you've tied a knot in the blanket, please uh, feel free to uh, receive ministry from them. So come as you are.